For us as a new team, you know, there's no shying away from the fact that we've got more to learn than anyone. Both are struggling at the back of the fleet and are just way off those top teams. I mean, there's one thing to look at the data, but there's another thing to be able to execute it. Two-time Olympic gold medalists, both the drivers on these two new teams. We'll see what they can really do. Man, we were close to qualifying for that final. We had our chances. In Sail GP, new teams Brazil and Italy start their journey with a treasure trove of data. They have a leg up that most new teams in sports never have, but utilising this data is not as easy as it may sound. It's a complex web of information that is becoming the defining factor in whether a team succeeds or fails in Sail GP. It's not just about how well you can sail an F50, but how well you can weaponise the data coming off it. In the ever-changing world of Sail GP, what do they need to do to not just catch up, but to get ahead? I mean, you're going against the best in the world here on the toughest boats in the world. The, the beauty of this competition, the beauty of the Oracle Data Cloud is we can go and see what are they doing different to us. Marcini, Grail, Ruggiero, Tita, both of them two times Olympic gold medalists, but in the longer form of the racing, this is short stadium style racing. There's a lot of skills that the teams are going to need. You've definitely got to trust your feel of the boat, but the data is, you know, it doesn't lie. And uh, you can definitely see in the data when a team's doing something different to another team or yourself. And you can use those differences to try and identify, you know, how they're doing something better than you are. The fact that the, the teams lower down the ladder can look at what the top teams are doing, the teams who are in front, you know, they need to keep innovating in the way that they're selling the boats and the techniques. But the good thing is the teams behind can always see what they're doing. New teams have a challenge. They have to learn the intricacies of the F50 from the data coming off the boat. It's a high-tech arena, and to stay competitive, they need to understand where they can make marginal gains from the shared data in the Rolex Sail GP Championship. I Traditionally, um, in, in previous seasons, there's always been a little bit of a gap, but with teams using more and more data now, uh, that gap is reduced. And certainly Brazil and Italy are a lot closer to the rest of the fleet than the new teams traditionally have been. For us as a new team, you know, there's no shying away from the fact that we've got more to learn than anyone. And that's the biggest goal is um, trying to outlearn our competitors, trying to take it step by step. You know, we know we've got a big challenge ahead of us, but it's a long season and we've got the talent within the team to, um, to tackle that one step at a time and to work our way towards the front of the fleet as quick as we can. At the very beginning of Sail GP, the best sailors who were traditionally better at sailing the boat did, did the best. Um, and as time has progressed, that factor has reduced. Data is so important, if you're not focusing on it a lot, um, you're going to fall behind. You can see here, Stevie, just that lack of experience coming through on both of the new teams. Both are struggling at the back of the fleet and are just way off those top teams. Oh yeah, it's not surprising, is it? They're totally new, but I expect them once they're off the water today, they're gonna to be in there digesting every bit of data. Hopefully after this Dubai event, we'll see some improvements to both. We've got three seasons of Sail GP experience, um, and that's one of the big things I'm bringing to this team. Say hello to your winners. It's the Black Foils with the win. Any team that you join, you're always trying to trying to learn quicker than your competitors. For us as a team, it's more about understanding the the tactics and the racing side of things, and it's big picture stuff that we can learn even from like a video feed. As a team gets more and more experience, you're probably diving deeper and deeper into the data to find the smaller and smaller differences. There's just a huge opportunity. There's so much data out there to learn from. They've got the experience on the boat to make it. It's important that they try and do it in bite-sized chunks. Don't try and grab the whole cake and eat it in one go. Let's work on little bits. For Marcini especially, that's gonna be a real learning to sail a boat by numbers rather than just by feel. We need to be able to filter through what is important, what's gonna make us go faster, what's gonna give us a better result. There's some things that are insignificant to the performance and some things are really important. We already knew that we were making some mistakes and we can see that internally from our own data and, and our own footage. But at the same time, we supplement that with, are we set up any differently from the good guys? And are they doing something different from us? Welcome to the ITM New Zealand Sail Grand Prix. 
Stevie, this will be the first high wind test for Brazil and Italy, and I got to imagine they're going to struggle to get a foothold in these conditions. Oh yeah, Todd, with this wind speed and choppy water, I think we can expect the other more experienced team to show the newbies who's boss. Since last season, SailGP moved the coaches from the water to the shore, a move that allows them to utilise the data far better than they could before. When we're racing, we're very heads in the boat. We've been super light as a team. Okay, pressure comes back here in three. The coaches, you know, who are looking at live data and comparing us to the other boats whilst we're racing, and they can always bring our attention to some of the areas where we're, we're lacking in performance and, and highlight really where we're uh, where we're weak against the other teams. And essentially they're a member of the crew, but they're not on the boat. The coach's corner in Sail GP is such a unique aspect of the sport really now, because normally these coaches are so removed from the team. They can actually literally go into the Oracle Cloud, drag out the data live. So much opportunity for the coaches, but it's really picking in on what's your key goal for the day. It's, it's a little bit of an art trying to figure out when to input onto the boat. It's really trying to give them help anticipate the next move. Is there something different that the first and second were doing different than us? One of them was ley lines, you know, really trying to utilise the, you know, the data on board the boat and trying to hit ley lines. We saw huge gains and losses. Still got quite a bit to go to boundary, but a long way to go to lay. Red Bull Italy, the comms coming across from the coach's corner to their F50 have been clean and precise all event. And now look, that's a third place finish again here in race five. That's Brad, that's fine. Great race, guys. As soon as you guys just get clean and sailing, you're off. Looking really fast. One thing you guys should consider, especially downwind when you're in those big waves, is potentially just leaving Jace and forgetting the cross. The downwind is so quick. Yeah, that's good. When you're going to New Zealand, you're always going to get some weather. Straight away, we started reviewing footage from San Francisco, from Christchurch, even from Sydney events where we typically get good breeze to really see, okay, what are the Aussies doing? What are the Kiwis doing? Those teams that generally seem to, let's say, step above the rest when, when you get the stronger stuff. Tita, take a bow. Those Italians must be doing something special. Mubadla Brazil, take note best outcome from Auckland in getting that great result was just the confidence boost for the team. It's a squad of proven winners. I mean, you look at Ruggie, back-to-back gold medals. Kyle Langford, I mean, pretty much won every Sail GP title. For them, just to go into that Sunday in Auckland and be in the game, and man, we were close to qualifying for that final. We had our chances to be in that final. Tilly missed the mark at the top of our screen there. It's all happening back in the pack. I mean, down, it's a great win, it's a great win. Okay, you gotta win, you gotta win. Hey, settle it in, guys. <laughs> Mentally, for the whole roster to know that, well, we can mix it up. And to be able to mix it up in only a second event, that's a great sign. Red Bull Italy showed in Auckland what a new team can do in Sail GP. By weaponising the data from the past and the present, they gave themselves the best chance of being on the right path for the future. The 2025 season is going to be a long one. Data and insights will continue to lead the way on where these teams end up.